so um, with um, me sort of uh, ending up kind of seven years ago, having my life change around after a car accident and sort of having to start into a whole new world and being met with uh, a bunch of um, adversity, I, um, I think when you're sort of dealing with adversity, one of the things that comes out of it is, or can come out of it, is, is sort of a clarity and a resolve to, to start and do some of the projects that you're really passionate about. And so one of the projects for, for me with that was a project that I'd started with um, uh, Kevin Ribble and Lori Yearwood. And um, it's all about, um, this is sort of the digital magazine side of it, which is all about sort of exploring different forms of contemporary storytelling. And we'd been, we'd sort of set this up as a BCIT project in, back in about 2013, I believe. And uh, uh, we kept talking and talking about building, you know, an educational portal with it to sort of teach some of the stuff that doesn't sort of fit in with what we teach at BCIT. And uh, we kept putting it off and off and off. And um, one of the things when you have to start working in a different way, because because you've got, um, um, well, basically, when for somebody, when we're talking about the pandemic at the moment and everybody's, um, you know, sort of went from this state of uh, self-isolation and not being around, able to be around other people. And, um, uh, it, it, you know, anxiety and all those sorts of things and being worried about having lost their career. Um, those are all things that, that I, I basically faced uh, through these car accidents and that uh, a lot of the people in some of the disability communities that I'm in face, face to a huge extent um, every day of their lives, not just for, you know, the, the, the year or couple of years that, that they're dealing with the pandemic. Um, and for, for Lori and I, because we, we did lose a bunch of our business because I'm the face of our business and people were worried that I wouldn't be capable because I was dealing with new realities in my life. I'm more than capable, but, <laughs> you know, it's other people's perceptions, you know, aside. Um, uh, but it's uh, one of the things we, we did realize was that we needed to start kind of thinking uh, retirement and start planning for the future. And so uh, one of the thoughts was really taking, you know, control over our own careers and starting to build the story to go classroom. Now, this was where we were at uh, back in um, February. Um, because we wanted to have open as a part of this, one of my big hurdles was finding a platform that we could build it on that would be sustainable unto itself. And, and I had several renditions in years previously of this site. Um, I kept with stubbornly trying to build with WordPress because um, I, I to make it sustainable. And so this version right now is um, um, I managed to find um, a plugin uh, um, for a learning management system here. So this is run on LearnDash right now, and I've, I've got sort of for anybody who's techy and geeky, I've got the um, studio uh studio press theme on here with it but um i'll this i'll play the video because this sort of shares the vision on where we are going hello and welcome to story to go i'm erica harkery one of your hosts here story to go is a community that's designed to explore contemporary storytelling in its many different forms through traditional media in addition to newer forms of media uh, in the digital arts. This is a concept that Laurie Yearwood, Kevin Ribble, and myself first conceived of back in 2013 as a part of some work we were doing through BCIT's Broadcast and Media Communications Part-Time Studies Program. Here we're going to be joined by a number of our storytelling colleagues from TV to radio to books newspaper, magazines, blogs, podcasting, web series, gaming, experiential media, and more as we explore storytelling today. We do hope you'll join us. And so the intent was to roll this out as an adult education um, website where we just kind of did like dabbled for a few years um, and then the pandemic hit. 
And um, uh, when the pandemic hit and we sort of saw everybody going nuts online, um, uh, we're like, okay, we got this. This is what <laughs> we've been trading for since my car accident. And so our initial reaction was, okay, people need to calm down. And so we've been building resources around that uh, for years because of, of what I'd been going through, but also because of some stuff Lori had been going through. And so we started to build out, um, you know, just sort of different resources for teachers on on uh, adding calming elements into their online education. Actually, these were already there. They weren't started to build in that stage. Uh, we had all these resources that uh, mainly Laurie had been building to to our travel magazine. Um, that uh, is, we're all on, you know, learning to relax and. Um, and kind of chill and things like that and and deal with what was going on in your current world and um so that was our first response our second response was also providing remote work things we've been working remotely for about 10 years um but then the next thing we saw is we're looking around we're in this artist community and a lot of our artist friends had lost their work and they weren't sure when it was going to come back. And so we decided to build story to go out in a much larger way than we initially intended. Um, there's um, the thing that immediately hit us um, with the need was, was kids programs. Um, we actually had a lot of private classes coming in asking us to develop private classes for their kids group. So it actually started with a group of cheerleaders who wanted a storytelling class uh this was this was that one right there um and it, it's changed a bit of our funding model um uh we always kind of thought the backbone was going to be kind of grab and go style classes with maybe a few private classes with more hands-on stuff um and live stuff for some of the participants um but we've we've realized for the first little while anyhow private classes are our funder that sort of helps support things like our open educational courses. Um, another funder right now is because uh, of some of the stuff I've been building previously, we've got some grants that we're working on that'll help to add more, um, um, add more open access courses on here, including one uh, that we've got from a grant from the web on web monetization. Um, so the web monetization model. So I'm gonna be explore, you know, experimenting with that with, on this site and a couple other sites. Uh, and then building out an open educational course on that. Uh, and um, um, we're sort of building, it's kind of becoming more of a community that we're building here. There's gonna be a health and wellness studio. Um, there's going to, and Lori's already started adding some of the this content for the health and wellness studio. We're gonna have a little culture hub. Uh, we work in the travel industry sometimes. So um, uh, we wanna be able to give back to that community that's really suffered over the last little bit. And then um, we're also going to be providing a teaching hub on there. Um, I believe Danielle's on the call right now. She's, she's, she's busily building uh, one, some of the courses on the back end. And so we've got a whole pile of different reasons why people come to us. Um, I'm finding people in my master's are coming to us because they want a home for their open educational resources that's not going to disappear uh, and that's going to be invested in maintaining those. Uh, we've got artists who want, you know, a different avenue to their career and maybe like a little bit of a nest egg that they're building for later on. We've got some people who just um, want to be able to teach different things out there. One minute um, remaining. So, yeah, um, it, this is, it's kind of, this is where we're starting. Um, we're looking for other people who'd like to play and like to experiment and, and get involved. Um, uh, uh, and, uh, and build. So I don't know if anybody has any questions on how, what I'm still in the, well, while it looks decent at the moment, there's still lots I need to kind of manipulate and fix on the back end. Uh, we've been quite, kind of going through a series of different evolutions with our discussion boards and I have still haven't found anything that I really like yet. So questions? Thank you, Erica. In um, in trying in keeping pace with uh, the time and the lineup we have, I'm going to drop the link for all the participants to your OE Connect page, and I would encourage participants to continue the conversation there. Um, drop your questions, any comments for Erica. 
thank you very much, Erica, and we will stop the recording here.